Welcome everybody to Statistics, Collecting and Representing Data Part 2. This resource builds on Collecting and Representing Data Part 1 and is designed to further extend learners thinking and understanding about how graphs represent data. Now the purpose of this resource is to support learners to develop an understanding of how bar graphs represent data and to support learners to derive meaning from a graph. And what we're going to do is we're going to build on part one and further extend learners thinking. Generating data. Now as with part one, we want the learners to generate their own data and their own information to ensure that it's meaningful and engaging. And a key learning point of this content is that graphs tell a story and it's our job to work out what that story is. So again, in the context of sport and fitness, and remembering that the sport and fitness learners are often avid runners, we're going to ask this question, how far do you run every week? And again, you can insert your own question to generate data on any topic. Now in a similar way to part one, we're going to ask learners to record how far they run on the board. Now some learners will run 50k, some will run 20k, but essentially we're recording all of these amounts on the board and in the end we end up with data. Now once you have recorded the distances on the board, draw the vertical axis and ask the learners what a suitable numerical framework is. That is, what numbers are you going to go up to and in what increments? Now as you can see here, because we have uh, a maximum of 50k that the learners are given, that's our maximum quantity and we're looking for an efficient way of getting to 50k but representing the data. So we've decided to do it in tens. Once this discussion is complete, you're going to ask the learners to come up to the board, write their name on the horizontal axes, and then draw in exactly how far they run. Once the learners have finished, it'll look something like this. Now once the learners have entered their data into this graph, it's a good idea to have a discussion about it and to really uh, pull out some of the things that it's telling us. Once this is done, you're going to explain to the learners that there are more efficient ways of representing this data and you might ask them what those different ways are. Then in another part of the board you write two new axes and get ready to write a new graph. Now as you can see what we've done here is we've changed what the axes represent and this is usually an interesting point for the learners so along the bottom you might write in number of kilometers and on the vertical axes you might write the number of people and then you're going to ask the learners to collate the data and write it in themselves. How many people ran 10 kilometers? There were two. How many ran 15? There were two. 20, there were three, and so on and so on. And you can see that nobody ran 35, one ran 40, one ran 50. And you might have discussion about the findings of this data. Now, if you get the opportunity to show both graphs on the board at the same time, usually it's quite enlightening to students to see how the data can be better represented by this graph simply by changing what the axes represent. Finally, step five, we're going to use the graph to ask the learners a series of questions to help them to read and delve behind it a bit more and develop the story of the graph. So question number one might, for example, be how many people run 20 kilometers per week? And they can look at the graph and see, ah, yes, there's three people in this class that run 20 kilometers per week. Number two, what's the second greatest distance run per week? Somebody runs 40 kilometers there, that's the second greatest distance. Number three, what's the most commonly run distance per week? Again, the graph lends itself to this. We can see the largest bar there is the 20 kilometer bar, so three people run that. And four, beginning to use the data in the graph to make inferences or to predict what might happen in the future. If a new learner was to enter the class, what could we say about how far they run? And this usually engenders a lot of good discussions because somebody will say, well, we don't know how far they run um, because we don't know what they do. But you can get a sense of how far they would run. For example, they're likely to run somewhere between 10 and 50 kilometers, just based on the evidence that we already have. So in summary, write a question on the board to generate discussion and data. Discuss the axes and have the learners add their data to the bar graph. Discuss other ways to represent the data and draw in new axes. And again, this is the difficult bit of this lesson. And that is getting the learners to think about how we might re-represent those data. Have the learners add the data and introduce questions to the learners to get them thinking about it. Mm -hmm.